great. Uh, first question. Uh, welcome back in Poland. You are not here for the first time. What can you say about Polish fans? How do they react to your music? Um, I think in general, I think it's it's hard to categorize now these days to me fans by country because I'm discovering more and more that humans are the same everywhere you go. And um, generally, fans of music in particular, um, kind of, it's, music seems to unite people. So it's, um, it's, but I must say that Eastern Europe in general is probably, in some ways, they're more intense and passionate because they don't get at concerts as often, it seems. You know, if you go, like back in the early 90s, you would play in the United States in certain big cities. And um, some shows were really amazing, but sometimes you got kids that were so, they're used to so much information all the time that they were very like, you know, and, and you go to, and then you could play in like Poland or, you know, in Turkey or something like, ah, you know, so it's, um, but, but in general, I think once you're pretty established as a group, the fans are pretty similar, you know, and it, you realize that a fan from Poland could be best friends from a fan from California because the music is uniting them, you know, and they're, and they have the same problems and the same thoughts and, you know, it's, it's a human thing, you know. But it is nice, and it's nice to be in Poland again. We've always had good shows here. Um, the second question is, do you know any Polish bands? Well, I know uh, Tenebri, who played before us. A couple, do you know them? Um, Simon is a friend, the singer of the group and the main writer guy, and he's really cool. I really like their music, um, and I think they've been around for a little while. They have some interesting experimental music. Um, what's another Polish band that I've known of for a long time? Well, of course, there was... Wasn't Sodom? No, Sodom was German. Vader. Yes. Vader's a kind of classic Polish old-school band. Um, who else am I missing in terms of big Polish metal bands? Is there... Maybe Behemoth? Behemoth. Oh, that's like they're black metal or something, yes. right? I'm not very hip to the black metal community, but but I, they're, I guess they're pretty popular, right? Um... Paul, you play a unique headless guitar, and uh, what was it your choice? What was the thing that made you choose such guitar? It was my first guitar teacher. Um, not really my first, but my first really serious teacher that kind of opened the door for me. Um, he played a Steinberger, and I was really um, inspired by his instrument and the way that he played, and it made it, it made it very cool for me. All of a sudden, the guitar was cool, you know? <laughs> Because um, generally, it's a, it's one of those instruments that I think people at first are confused when they see it. They don't understand how you tune it. You know, there's no headstock. And um, but uh, I've been fascinated with the guitars since the '80s and been playing them. And they've really versatile instruments. They do a lot of different sounds. And we have an endorsement with them now, so we're really grateful. They're just great guitars. Um, how do you practice your playing to stay in shape? Um, well, I feel like uh, the I feel like the eternal student, you know. Really, I mean, music is so complex and so vast. It's such a deep language that um, it never ends, you know, in terms of practicing and working. But on tour, I I tend to just warm up before the concert. You know, I just do exercises. I run through songs, um, and then when I'm at home, I I study. You know, I do like writing. I work on music, and I also get into studying. I, I learn classical pieces, I do jazz stuff, standards, and I'm kind of all over the place. You know, I feel like it never ends. It really, it's a little overwhelming, really. I think it would take lifetimes to master the guitar. So it's just um, a constant work, constant humility to the instrument and to music because it's so vast and deep. But it's great because as a band, we feel like beginners. You know, we, we feel like we're just starting in terms of... Um, I, you know, I mean, I feel like a little child with music because it's so, there's so many possibilities. It's really exciting. Great. Um, in Cynic, you mix clear vocals with growl and heavy riffs with jazz elements. What is the inspiration for this kind of music? Um, I don't know, really. I don't really know what the source of creativity is. It's really a big question, you know. Um, if I knew how to turn it on and off... That'd be really cool, you know, but it's um, it's a mysterious thing, really, to me, the idea of where, how a musician gets interested in shaping sound and making, 
and and arranging it in a particular way, like the way that we do it. It's um, I don't know where it comes from, other than just the interest in being original. You know, I've always been interested in original music and trying to do something different. And um, I think that's probably the root of it. Really, is maybe just um, knowing as a musician that's skilled enough how to sound like other people. That I know I don't want to do that. I, 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 you know, oh, that sounds like Metallica. Nope. Next. That sounds like Slayer. Next. You know. So you're trying to constantly find your own language. You know, and、um, that's been. I think the the focus for Cynic, pun intended, since the beginning is really to have our own voice and to be original artists and to bring something new to the to the world, you know. And I don't know if we ever really bring anything new ultimately, but we're we're trying to just kind of change, add a new color, you know, change things a little bit. So it um it again it's uh it's one of those things that it's you're constantly. Refining and trying to find the perfect song, and it, it, you're never finished. You know, <laughs> it's a lot of, it's really kind of an endless process that's really exciting and torturous at the same time. <laughs>、um, we know that you're interested in human mind, reason of life, and Buddhism. Does this have an influence on you as a musician? Yeah, I think、um, I learned early on from a, a guitar player who was really inspiring to me, John McLaughlin. Who was a who's a played with a group called Mahavishnu Orchestra and did a lot of solo records.、Um, he was one of the first musicians I saw that married his spiritual life with his music and kind of bridged the gap. And、um, I when I saw that I thought I want to figure out how to do that because it always felt like music and then meditation. And I, I found that I could. You know, when I started to write words and write lyrics and understand more about who I was, I could, I, I could write about these things, and I could find a way to kind of make the sound feel like the things that were happening more in my heart than in my head. You know, I think the head is very confused and messy. It's more getting here. You know,、um, so it's、um, it's one of those things again that I think it's constantly uncovering and trying to research and understand who I am and. Pull away the layers, you know. Who, who is, who, who are we when we when we stop thinking? Because you know we we tend to think that all these thoughts, all these thoughts are us. They're not us, you know. So,、um, and I find at the root of that, when I get down and I stop all the thinking and all the craziness, there's something very tender and、um, and real and pure. And that's really what I try and kind of come to with the music is.、Um, Accessing a very pure, innocent place that feels、um, honest. You know, it's not a, it's not an act. You know, it's trying to get to the truth. You know, and it's、um, again, it's you're never finished. It's always, it's a life work. It's a constant progress. Yeah, it's a, it's it's again, it's very scary. You know, it's really, it takes I think a lot of courage and bravery to, to be naked, to be vulnerable. To、um, take off the armor, you know, and say, "Here I am." Yeah. <laughs>